qualifying section on the first day saw competitors battling against the elements and it was a case of water and mud everywhere. But off-road racers are a hardy breed at the best of times and it was going to take more than swollen rivers and a little mud to dampen their competitive spirit. Alfred van Vieren and Piet Pelsa overcame this spot of bother to qualify the fastest among the Class 5 vehicles and were 14th overall on the grid for the 450 km Day 2 racing section. Craig Draper and Gilles Sillier were the fastest of the Class 4 entrants with Philip Malon and Richard Leek quickest overall in their turbocharged Toyota Hilux. Class Degena and Piet Swanepoel qualified second fastest, with Degena in with a chance of finishing second in the special vehicle category in the national championship. Richard Carolyn's chances of winning the Class 9 title disappeared when he crashed into a big hole, and leading Class 3 qualifiers, Bill Angus and Derek Weatherall, were also among the non finishers. Richard Hood was the leading Class 10 qualifier, but was also destined to drop out on Section 2. The top 10 qualifiers showed an equal split between Bucky's and Space Frame cars, with no surprises among the top 10 crews. For the bike brigade, the conditions provided for plenty of drama and a couple of unscheduled dunkings. Although a non-championship event for bikes, the Silverline Swazi Sun 500 drew an impressive entry with many top names. But there must have been times when many of the bikers would have preferred to stay at home. Nati Gerber found a novel way of cleaning his KTM, but was not alone in his misery. Even national 200-class champion Ralph Pitchford parted company with his Kawasaki, although he recovered to finish 10th overall in the qualifying event. Fastest of the qualifiers was Kevin DuPont on a KTM, who managed to steer clear of taking a swim. He was followed by Kevin Tebbett on another KTM, with Errol Dalton, Hilton Hayward and Patrick Andrews also well-placed. Day two saw the weather in a kinder mood. For many of the competitors fighting it out for top championship positions, there was plenty of tension, with Philip Malone needing to finish no lower than fourth to win the commercial vehicle championship. But with a man like Oppie behind us, uh, it's always a dangerous situation. Uh, we would like to uh, win the event, of course, but I think uh, priority to today is to finish well up there. Klaus Degener also needed a good finish and was hoping for a repeat of his 1988 win. We got a chance of uh, coming second um, and uh, we've got to protect our third position at this stage because Richard Schilling and Fred Levesque are point behind us. Roof of Africa winners Api Reineke and Lukas Dreyer in the BP Nissan Safari were also among the favourites with consistency their great asset. Jack Spencer and Steve from Wack were to have an eventful race with their Rover V8-powered Sandmaster showing early signs of distress. Frick Mulder and Jakub von der Linde were also in for a tough time. Their fast-fit Nissan picked up suspension problems, but they held on to finish 14th overall. Natal crew Robert Bunso and Graham Wilson qualified 8th fastest but were to fall by the wayside with mechanical problems. Richard Carolyn was another casualty and he saw his chances of winning the Class 9 title disappear when he crashed into a donga. Seasoned campaigners Barney Curtis and John Angus had a steady run with no dramatics and picked up 8th place overall and 3rd in Class 6 in their Land Rover. Another consistent performance saw Alfred van Vieren and Piet Pelser take 7th overall and win Class 5 in their Toyota. Throughout the event there were some fine duels with racing close and highly competitive. 
Alex and Antoinette Vowles picked up second in Class 5, with Arnold Pistorius in car 903 lifting the Class 9 title when Richard Carolyn and Harry Roscoe were forced to drop out. Malan and Leek took an early lead, but hit a snag with their engine management computer. This dropped them to fourth, but they pulled back a place to finish third overall and take the commercial vehicle championship. Degener and Swanepoel lost the lead to Milan and Leek when they arrived at a refuel point before their service crew. They ran into a clutch problem and eventually had to settle for fourth place. Reinecke and Dreyer just kept grinding away at the opposition and consistency took them to victory. Richard Schilling and Fred Levesque overcame a puncture and a spell on the wrong route to finally end up third overall. A blown head gasket hampered Spencer and Fermak, who had to fill the radiator using Fermak's gumboot at every river crossing. Curtis and Angus were still motoring steadily, while at the final refuel point, media and spectators waited patiently for the competitors. Reinecke and Dreyer clocked in just 16 seconds ahead of Swanepoel and Diergener. For the latter, there were problems. They slowly coasted into the checkpoint, but the car stalled. And they were forced to push the Duckham's Chenoweth to the service area to repair the clutch. First we lost the rear brakes. Okay. Then we lost the clutch now. We had to stop once to refill it with the fluid. It's just gone completely now. There's no clutch at all. After getting back onto the route, Schilling and Levesque were followed into the refuel point by Ashley Thorne and former SA Navigators champion Dagmar Blankner. Thorne and Blankner started last and carved their way through the field to finish fifth overall. Up front, Reinecke and Dreyer were in control with Reinecke's wife full of smiles as the pair came cruising across the finish line. They were followed by Richard Schilling and Fred Levesque with Schilling, a rather happy man. Besides having had a problem with a puncture, a little tour of the country, um, I'm delighted that we came second overall and I managed to finish third in the championship. Commercial vehicle champion Philip Milan also had plenty to celebrate. But to me it was very, very important to, to win it for my sponsors and for me, I'm getting old. So uh, something like this means a tremendous amount to me. Swazi resident Kevin DuPont was hoping for a local win in the bike event. I was hoping, I actually prayed last night that it rained, you know, rained some more, so uh, um, I'd go out there with more confidence. But, uh, you know, being at home, I, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty confident that I'm going to go out there and win. Kevin Tappet was also in a confident mood. And I'm looking forward to it, I enjoy it. I've won it before, so maybe I can do it again. While some young stars of the future discussed tactics, competitors were soon down to serious business out on the route. As with the cars, there was plenty of close racing throughout the field, with of course a test of both man and machine. With pride at stake, some of the riders occasionally got themselves into a bit of a tangle. Andy Smythe went well to finish sixth, but for Peter Trollope, there was agony with no ecstasy. A heavy fall saw him injure his back and dislocate ribs, but happily Trollope was up and about after the event. Even the top riders make the odd mistake, but Tebbit was enjoying himself hugely. After overhauling DuPont, he never put a foot wrong to score another win in an event he likes. Tabbitt's victory salute as he crossed the line set it all for the KTM rider. Yeah, I had a good ride. I enjoyed it. It was good fun. Next home was Kevin DuPont, 
who was disappointed not to pull off a win in front of his home crowd. Everybody around here was hoping I'd win and I was hoping too. But next year maybe, the bike went well besides that. A big wheelie saw Lesotho star Patrick Andrews celebrate third place in his first ride under the Winston Yamaha banner. Other leading competitors like Jeremy Davies, Hilton Beatty, Alfie Cox and Willie Island were in America for the famous Baja 1000 race. They missed the Silverline Swazi Sun 500, but the event provided a fitting finale to the season.